Hi, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my crime and policing channel. In today's session, we are continuing our journey down criminology. And in particular, we are still in the age of enlightenment. Last week, we looked at Cesar Vicaria and this time we're looking at Jeremy Bentham. Now then, Jeremy Bentham comes from the UK and he was born in 1748 and died in 1832. So quite a long time, um, especially for those days, right? His memory lives on, as does some other stuff, which I'll show you in a bit. Slightly peculiar, but okay, right? I love eccentrics, I do. Um, anyway, so Jerry Bentham was a bit of a groundbreaker and a bit of a good egg as well. So not only, I'm mentioning him because he had a massive impact on criminology, but he also had some ideas and some values that were a lot different to other people at the time. He was an advocate for equal rights for women, an advocate for... Um, animal rights and animal welfare, and he called for an abolition of slavery. So, you know, this guy was clued up. So Jerry Bentham was a bit of a good egg, and he had some fantastic ideas. One of his ideas was a panopticon, and this was like a building he'd designed, which is like, like a new prison idea. And he tried to like get the government to buy into it for years and years and years. He wasted like 60 years of his life trying to get this thing off the ground coming so far with success only to get knocked back and knocked back and knocked back. And he actually got some compensation for, for this. He got like 23 grand or something, which I'm sure was a, a lot of money back then. Um, so the Panopticon was like a circular design, which I'll pop up here. And it was like kind of the cells were all like that, like an orange. Uh, that's what I think of, like an orange segment. Um, and you, you need less jailers basically to watch over them. It kind of became like an easier system. And I don't know why it wouldn't have worked, in all honesty. Um, and that was Jerry Bentham's idea. And they never actually took it on when he was suggesting it. And he even offered to be the guard and stuff. And he was gutted. Anyway, so he invented that. And he was always looking at reforms and looking at how we could make things better. Um, how we could ensure people's lives were better. And how we could make sure that we were spending less on these things. He even had ideas to have like... Um, like water mills and things like that where prisoners walked on them to generate income so he's constantly thinking about how to make things better he also was the father of utilitarianism which is a bit of a mouthful now then in simple terms utilitarianism is um it's an ethical theory and saying that actions are morally right if they tend to promote happiness and pleasure and that's psychological as well as um physical, <laughs> physical, um, and morally wrong if they tend to promote unhappiness and displeasure or pain. So it, it's basically saying that actions are right if they make people happy, actions are wrong if they make people sad. That's me saying it in the easy terms. That's utilitarianism. So there are three main points that I picked up on, um, let me find the site so I can quote it for you. It's on thoughtco.com, right, okay. And that says the three principles of utilitarianism our pleasure or happiness is the only thing that truly has intrinsic value. And that doesn't mean, you know, I don't know, just like getting a kinder or something. It means like the deep happiness and things like that, the morally right things to do. Um, actions are right if they promote happiness and they're wrong if they promote unhappiness. And the, the big point here is everyone's happiness is equal, which I think is pretty sound, right? Especially for back in those days. So well done, Jeremy Bentham. Very proud of you. And it was basically saying as well that it kind of it's good if it makes people happy, it is evil if it makes people sad. And that's an easy way to distinguish what's good and what's bad. And this kind of links to me, I think, to the social contract theory. So if someone's going to be shouting at the screen going, no, it doesn't. Hear me out, OK? So the social contract theory, which I'll go through um, in depth in another video, is kind of like where when you're born, you enter this social contract. You've never signed it. You didn't get a free phone or anything like that. The social contract is what's right and wrong in society. We kind of all know what's good and what's bad, what's right and what's wrong. When you deviate from that, it's when you break that social contract. Now, if I look at utilitarianism and what Bentham's saying, is the good is obviously the good stuff of the contract, which is what we should all be like. The bad is we're breaking the contract. We're, we're, we're deviating from what our society sees as morally good. I hope that makes sense. And I hope you, you might agree with me, you might not you know, give me your thoughts. It's all theory, isn't it? We've all got our own little brains and our own minds. Also, so I've mentioned that Jerry Bentham is a founder of utilitarianism and he made Panopticon, or he tried to anyway. He was also, like I said, heavily involved in animal rights and 
economics and things like that. What I'd like to talk about, because it is only a short video, this one, um, is about his auto icon as well. So, what is that, I hear you ask? Well, here's an image. Do, 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 do. Jerry Bentham, a man of science, obviously, was like, it was involved in the University College London and his building and stuff. And he asked a shareholder for £100, he was one of the shareholders. And although he was towards the end of his life when it was created, he greatly inspired the people of that university. So much so that eventually his auto icon was displayed there and is still displayed there now in a case. But what is an auto icon? Is it a waxwork? What is this? It's his skeleton. His skeleton in a box with a wax head in a suit. And actually, he wanted this. So he made like a like a, a bit of a list for one of his friends, donated his body to him and said, look, I want to be an auto icon. I want to be on my little chair. I want my favorite clothes on. I want to be there. So if anybody wants to see who thought of these grand ideas, it was this guy. And you know, clearly they made an impact and they're still showing him to this day, like I said, in University College London, in a glass case in a student centre. Um, originally he wanted his own head put on there and they were looking at ways and how to preserve that him and his friend before he passed away but the methods they used didn't quite work and kind of looked a bit freaky so they kept his head separately and then made him a wax head with some of his own hair. Um, they do still have the head by the way. They had it on display for a long time, the students were messing about with it so they um, stored it somewhere safe where students can't play pranks with Jeremy Bentham's head. I mean, do they, do they want cursing? Have they not seen Indiana Jones in films like that? You don't mess about with dead guys' heads, guys. So yeah, you can go and see Jeremy in all his glory um, down at University College London. And yeah, the guy made an impact. And if you're gonna look at, let's say, how criminologists have affected criminology in Britain, Jeremy Bentham is one of those guys. And I know that that's one of the assignments that my students are looking at. Don't forget that you don't have to be British to have affected British criminology. People like Beccaria and Kant also had huge impacts on criminology in Britain. But yeah, that, that's Bentham, utilitarianism, and obviously he made the panopticon, or tried to. And that's it from me today. See you later. Bye.